The Xiaomi 14 Ultra, no joke, has one of the most impressive cameras that I have ever used on any phone. Period. Just by looking at this phone, you know it means business. There's nothing bland and boring about this design. And the second you pick it up, you know you're in for a ride. So in today's video, I want to be going over everything you guys need to know about the camera system on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Of course, I will be giving you guys a ton of photo samples and some video samples as well. And just to let you know, I am working on a detailed camera comparison test against the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Samsung S24 Ultra. So if you guys want to see that, definitely hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when those videos drop. So let's kick things off with the primary camera. It is a 50 megapixel sensor, but it's not just any regular 50 megapixel sensor. It is also a one inch sensor. This isn't only great for low light because having a larger sensor means more light hits it, but it also means every photo you take will have incredible natural depth of field. Everyone nowadays knows what portrait mode is. It's artificial depth of field created years ago back when phones didn't really have large sensors. So to get that nice creamy background, phones just used software and it worked good for a long time and it even looks good today, but you still get some issues around the hair. The cutouts isn't really great. Having a large sensor and a fast aperture allows for 100% natural depth of field, which means you will never have issues with edge detection since this is pure hardware, not software. The photos coming from the main camera are just amazing with fantastic HDR and I really, really love the natural look of that Leica collaboration. The colors are very true to life and the photos don't look like your typical smartphone camera and honestly in many instances they look like they're coming from an actual camera. One of the coolest things about the primary camera is the ability to control the aperture. When it's wide open at f1.63, you will have amazing depth of field and when you close it down to f4, you still have some depth of field but it's dramatically reduced. This is obviously also helpful for controlling things like light, especially if you use the pro mode on uh, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra with a uh, ND filter on top that to help control the light, you can also open up that aperture so that way you can have a lot of light, but also they, since the aperture is open, you can have that nice depth of field. Again, the, the amount of things this phone can do is honestly really impressive. There are two ways to control the aperture, one of which is the normal camera mode by just simply swiping down and picking between the four presets, or by going into pro mode where you can get much finer controls. Now let's move on to the ultra wide camera. It is a 50 megapixel sensor f1.8, which is super fast for an ultra wide camera. When I say this camera is ultra wide, oh boy, I mean it. <laughs> you have a 122 degree field of view, which is just insane. You can pretty much get everything you want in frame, even if you're located in a very tight space. I also like how well it fixes the distortion along the sides of the photos created by the ultra wide effect. And I'm also pleased about the colors from the ultra wide sensor being very very similar to the colors from the main sensor. In fact, all of the rear cameras share the same look in terms of colors, which cannot always be said about other brands. The only small issue I have with the ultra wide camera is that it does have a small tendency to overexpose uh, certain scenes. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. Uh, the only way you can kind of get, you know, go around that is to use the EV uh, exposure slider and just put it down a couple steps and that problem just seems to go away on its own. So. There's that, but you guys should know that. And now we move on to the 3.2 time telephoto and the five time telephoto periscope camera. Now, I gotta be honest, I did take more photos using the five times lens compared to the 3.2 times lens, mainly because the photos coming from those two focal ranges are basically the same in terms of color and sharpness as they are both 50 megapixels as well. But I do prefer the five times lens a bit more because it has the ability to do super macro photos, allowing you to get in crazy close to whatever you're taking a photo of. I love everything about the five times periscope camera, especially, especially that nice creamy depth of field that it produces, making your subject really stand out and be the center of attention. The detail and color accuracy is top notch. And believe me when I say this, you will not have an issue at all. And now we get on to the cameras that I don't really like that much the selfie cameras. Now it is a 32 megapixel sensor and the photos are just fine. They're not anything crazy and the Leica collaboration does not cover the front facing camera. So the colors and exposure and control aren't really that great. Um, many of the photos coming from the selfie camera are a bit too overexposed. It's not terrible, but 
it's definitely far from the best, uh, but I do say I do like that natural depth of field coming from the 32 megapixel sensor, so there's that. Now, when it comes to recording videos, this phone is no slouch at all. It can actually record up to 4K 120 in pro mode and up to 4K 60 in the normal video mode. The stabilization is fantastic and the video outcome is nice and sharp, but it's not over sharpened. It, it, it does look natural, which is something that I like. Now, the cool thing about the phone is that it allows you to record videos using a LUT. What's that? Good question. That stands for a lookup table. What's that? Another great question. It's basically fancy speak for filters. I, again, that's just putting it very shortly. When you're recording in the normal video mode, you can use many filters which add a specific look to the video. And my favorite, when you're recording using log, you can even preview the video using the Rec. 709 LUT so you can see in real time how that video is going to look like as well as how the HDR is going to look like. But it doesn't stop there. This phone can even record in 8K across all of the rear cameras since they're all 50 megapixels. But you cannot actually switch between all of the cameras while recording in 8K. So if you start recording in 8K using the ultra wide, you cannot just, you know, hop on over to the five times without first stopping the video, switching to the five times zoom, and then pressing the record again. If you want to be able to switch between all cameras optically, not digitally, but optically, you have to go back down to 4K60, which honestly is, I think, good enough for like 99% of people out there. Overall, I really love what Xiaomi is doing with their phones with the Leica collaboration. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like your typical smartphone photos you know it doesn't try to get hdr crazy crazy good by just boosting the shadows and lowering the highlights and everything just looks very flat with the xiaomi phones you know especially with the 13 the xiaomi 13 really impressed me but especially now with the 14 ultra it really helps add that depth you know they're not afraid of maybe making the shadows a little too dark because it kind of adds that kind of it adds a different kind of vibe to the photos and that is actually what helps it stand out and not make it seem like it just came from any regular you know smartphone the amount of control you have while taking photos and videos on this phone is honestly mind-blowing and i'm pretty sure i covered everything but i may have missed a couple because there's just so much things to do with the camera uh, like i said i don't even think the xiaomi 14 ultra is a phone i think it's a camera and then it's a phone. It's just that crazy. So if I miss something, definitely comment down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But overall, in short, this phone has definitely jumped to the, my number one spot of my favorite smartphone camera. And it jumped close to the number one spot for my favorite video on uh, on a smartphone. So it's it's quite impressive. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, definitely click that like button. It's absolutely free to you, but it helps me and the channel out a lot. And I always truly appreciate it. And if you guys are new here, consider subscribing. This was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.